Hi, this is Frank Carmody, and today we're going to take a look at how constraints affect our sketching. So I'm going to open a new part file, and first thing I'm going to do is just to create two rectangles. Okay, so to create my two rectangles, right-click, done, to get out of the rectangle tool, right-click, show all, con or right-click, I finished sketch there, so I'm going to get back into my sketch, sorry about that. So we're going to edit sketch, then I'm going to right-click, show all constraints. So here are the constraints that that inventor has placed upon this um, the drawing here. You notice that these two lines, notice when I hover over the uh, parallel constraint here that those two lines are marked as parallel, these two lines are marked as parallel, and then these two lines are marked as perpendicular, or constrained as perpendicular. Finally, this top line is constrained as horizontal. Now to get to delete constraints, we actually right click on them and click delete. Clicking the X next to the constraints won't delete them, it will actually just make them invisible. So now I've deleted all of the constraints on the right tri or right rectangle. <clears throat> now if I try to drag this corner now, I'm outside of a tool, so I can drag the corner. Notice that I can drag a corner of this shape so that it's no longer a rectangle. If I try this on the other shape, notice that it remains a rectangle due to those constraints. Okay, the second thing we're going to look at is as I draw. If I draw a line, notice that this line is being made perpendicular. Do you see the, the upside down T next to my cursor? There's also an upside down T next to this line here. Notice again. If I were to click right now, right click done, right click show all constraints, notice that these two lines have been constrained as, as perpendicular. That means that as I dimension them, they will remain perpendicular no matter what until I right click and delete the constraint. So as we're drawing, we have to be very careful to notice what um, what our cursor changes to as we're drawing lines. So let's go ahead and we're going to um, just work with a few constraints here. So we're going to make uh, um, just a few lines. We're going to make five lines. Okay, just five lines. We're making sure that as I'm making sure as I draw these lines that I'm not placing any constraints on them whatsoever. So I wouldn't click here because that would be You'll notice that my cursor shows that it would be a parallel constraint on the two lines. So I right click done. I'm also going to make a circ two circles. Okay, I'm careful not to line up the centers as I draw because I want to show you the constraints themselves. And finally, a final line. Okay, now we're going to just affect this drawing using constraints. So the very first thing we're going to do is make um, two lines parallel. So to make two lines parallel, I would click here and here on my second line. Now those lines are parallel. I can right click and show constraints. Oops, right click, done. Right click, show all constraints. Now we have two lines are parallel. Next, I can go ahead and I can make one of those lines horizontal. So let's go ahead. I'm going to click the horizontal constraint, click the top line. Now those lines are both horizontal because the top line is constrained to be horizontal and the bottom line is constrained to be parallel. Okay, next I'm going to make the, uh, this line vertical. Oops. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and make this line vertical. Oops. Something went wrong there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo. Let's click on the vertical constraint. So I'm going to go ahead. I notice that the the point here at the center of the line, uh, if I if I highlight that and click now, it's not going to work. So I have to actually make sure the whole line is highlighted. I click uh, click the line. Now it's constrained to be vertical, and I'm going to go ahead and click the second line and make it perpendicular to the first line. Okay, I click the second line, click the first line, so it knows which one to be perpendicular to, and done. I can right click, show all constraints. Okay, so I have a vertical constraint and a perpendicular constraint. The next two constraints that we're going to look at, or the next constraint we're going to use is to make two lines equal. So this equal constraint makes two lines of equal length. So I click on the equal constraint, click the first line, click the second line. Now they're of equal length. Next I'm going to use the equal constraint again, click the first line, the second line. Now those are of equal length. Right click, done. Next I'm going to use a concentric constraint. So I'm going to click the concentric constraint button. This means that I'm going to make two circles have matching center points. So I click once on the first circle, once on the second circle. 
And now their, their center points are constrained. Right click done, right click show all constraints. We'll see the two circles are now constrained to be have their center points to match. <clears throat> the final constraint we're going to use is the tangent constraint. So what I'm going to do with the tangent constraint is click on one line and one circle, and that circle expands to be tangent with the line. Let's see how I can do that differently. Control Z to undo. Let's say that we click the circle first. Click the circle, click the line, and it reacts in just the same way. We click, and remember, once again, we click the line and then the circle. If we had first clicked the dimension, and if we did dimension this circle to be one inch, let's see how it reacts differently. So now let's take, let's go ahead and and uh, define the constraint to be a tangent, the line tangent of the circle. And notice that the circle actually moves to the line, but it doesn't expand. So the way the dimensions and constraints um, interact can often be very complicated, and it's best just to experiment and learn them on your own. Okay, so your assignment is to use all the current constraints you've seen here in the video. When, you're, uh, when you finish, go ahead and save. Okay, and here we're going to go ahead, uh, we're going to go Mr. Carmody underscore constraints and save. I do want to replace it. Okay, now it's your turn. Create an image using, or create a part file using all the constraints I've shown in this video and upload. Thank you.